I don't give a fuck. What difference does that make? How much testosterone do you really need and how do you know? It's a funny question because it's definitely a misunderstood concept. Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. There's two different populations, right? There's the HRT population, and then there's the bodybuilder population, or those who identify as pop bodybuilders. A hormone replacement therapy is the dose that you replace hormones with. So testosterone replacement therapy is to replace the testosterone. So 20 milligrams a day with an insulin syringe, that would be if you use this needle, an insulin syringe, and if it's 200 milligrams per milliliter, you draw it up to the 10. That's it. 10% of 200 is 20. So 20 milligrams every day. People are gonna get hung up with this and they're like, start whining about sub Q. If you can't reach muscle with this needle, then I guess you're gonna have to inject sub Q. But to stick a hypodermic syringe or some big ass needle into one of your muscles and do scar tissue damage just to de deliver. First of all, you wouldn't even be able to measure up 20 milligrams with one of these syringes. Let me see. All right. How do we even measure 20 milligrams in this bitch? All right. So that is 100 milligrams right there. So we'd have to do the literally the menisci the the plunger itself. That would be that. So the difference between that and that is 20 milligrams. There's no way to use this every day. Idiocy. You use this 20 milligrams every day. That's how much you use. That's HRT. And if you want to replace your growth hormone, it'd be pretty much the same exact amount with the growth hormone. So you would draw up the testosterone and you draw up the growth hormone right there. If you reconstitute it the way I like to do it, boom, that is your daily dose. That's how you know how much testosterone should you use. If you're HRT, you should use 20 milligrams a day. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe some people could use more, like 30 milligrams a day, or in theory, all the way up to 40 milligrams a day. But if you're using 40 milligrams a day, which is 280 a week, you're way past the point of HRT. And probably your estrogen is a little too high at that point. And that's when you'd have to start controlling your estrogen levels with Prima Bolin. Or if you're working within the American legal system, I mean medical system, or do I, then you would use something really crude and stupid like Arimidex, which is almost impossible to manage um, because Arimidex kills 97% of your estrogen. So if the goal was to take you from 50 to 40, fuck that, you're never going to be able to pull it off. It's retarded. The whole American medical system is absolutely bass, ass backwards, totally wrong. They don't know what they're doing. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. Uh, we'll be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. Now, for the bodybuilding community, how do you know how much testosterone you use? You use enough testosterone to where your estradiol begets the most out of your GH. And you're going to say, but Todd, what if I don't use GH? Well, then that's a whole other conversation. You're running on one leg. That's ridiculous to use, not use GH. So we're going to assume that you're smart and you use GH. Then you use as much GH as you can afford, basically and run enough tests to get enough estrogen to get maximum conversion. I get maximum conversion at 100 estradiol. If I go over 100 estradiol, I don't make more IGF-1 out of my GH. Now, some people will say that systemic IGF-1 is meaningless. That may be true, but if you get more 
systemic IGF-1 at a fixed GH level, so let's say you're using six units of GH, and your systemic IGF-1 is 458 on 100 estradiol, like mine, and you go down to 80 estradiol, and your IGF-1 goes from 458 to, let's say, 419, then we know you're wasting money on GH because you're not getting the full effect of the GH because your estradiol isn't high enough. If you're getting less conversion, let's say 90% conversion at the liver, you're probably also getting 90% conversion at the muscle or something of that ilk. But most likely you will get less out of your GH at the local muscular level if you're getting less of it at the liver. We know that estrogen is good for building muscle because it augments GH converted to IGF-1. We can directly measure that with blood work. So once we've fine-tuned the exact amount of estradiol you get the maximum benefit for, that's what you use. And then in theory, you would, once you hit that level, so let's say for most people, you're gonna get the maximum benefit out of 280 or 350 or 490, probably you don't need more than 70 milligrams of testosterone to get maximum E2 conversion of GH. Now there could be a possibility that there is drawbacks to your E2 before you hit the ceiling of its benefits. That it could be you get gyno at 60 or 70 E2, but you get maximum benefit of GH at 100. What do you do? Well, Masteron's pretty cool in that one of its metabolites is an estrogen beta agonist, which in other words, it helps control the breast tissue growth. So Masteron has a special ability to do all the good things that breast, that um, estrogen will do without having the bad things of estrogen. So it's all the good and not the bad. It, ma estrogen, basically Masteron's metabolite works similar to a CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulator, and it's better than the actual commercial breast cancer treatment. You basically, hopefully what you're taking home is that there's four food groups. There's testosterone, the pro-hormone estrogen, Primo, an aromatase inhibitor that's also anabolic, unlike using an astrozole, which I think is just kind of silly. Then there is Masteron, which is a neutral compound. It doesn't raise or lower estradiol, but it does give you all the benefits of estradiol. And then there's GH. So we want the estradiol there so we can get the benefits of the GH because the GH will become IGF-1 and the IGF-1 will grow tissue. IGF-1 will also help block fat growth. If you're not at your genetic limit, if you're like 180 pounds, you probably don't need any steroids at all. But maybe you've been 180 pounds for five years and you can't get any bigger. Now we, and you're assuming you're eating and sleeping right. Then you add in some steroids and you get up to 190 pounds. And then you can't get any bigger, so you have to add more. And now you're 200 pounds and you have to add more. And it's something that goes up and down in theory over time that you run, uh, you run enough anabolic steroids to get to a level that you're growing, but you don't need to use more. And if you use too much, then you're going to have health consequences. Most of the time people have health consequences from anabolic steroids. It's because of abuse, not use. And how do you know? So if you're using just enough to be enough to help you grow muscle, then that's use. If you're using more than you need because you are have some type of emotional drive to make faster gains, basically you're insecure about yourself so much that you're willing to do risky things to try to accelerate process, progress, then you that mental illness will manifest as drug abuse. So, you know, people aren't purely drug abusers. Usually there's some underlying mental illness that's inducing the drug abuse. And I'm gonna say one more time, the amount of tests you use is 20 milligrams a day for HRT, maybe 30, maybe 40. Obviously with a baby doses like that, you don't need to use anything more than an insulin syringe. The only time you have to use a hypodermic syringe is when you're gonna fill this bitch up past the one every day. Otherwise, you don't need it. You can use an insulin syringe for that. Yes, you can combine everything in here. You can put mayonnaise in here. I don't give a shit. You can combine everything you're gonna inject into the same needle. Bodybuilding community, you use enough testosterone to get enough estrogen to get the most out of your GH by running serial blood work and receptor match mapping that shit.
Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, there is a full length version available. If you didn't like it, you're an R word. This is just the summary, just the tip, if you will. This is the tip of the iceberg of knowledge that I have bestowed upon you. Please accept and absorb the rest of this iceberg. Now, a lot of people are selling this stuff. They are selling courses on the material. This is free. You don't have to pay if you click the link. It's not a funnel that you're not going to get duped into giving your credit card or your email. You just get to watch the video. If you like the video, watch the whole series, watch it in order, the how to grow. There's numbers for a reason. Hopefully you completed preschool and you can count. So you watch them in order for a reason. That's why they're filmed in that reason, in that order, because they go from most important to least important. And as you suspected, the PED videos at the end, I guarantee you the answer to your problems is not more steroids. It's better lifting. If it's missing, it's probably because you're watching a censorship platform switch to one of the uncensored platforms to see the PED video. I believe it's video five and I believe it's video 10 are not in the censored platform. So you are in a censored environment if you're missing those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to get a consult by clicking the link in the description box.